All right. It is 11. All right. Well, let's get started. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks everyone for being here. Those that are in person and those that are watching through the, their screen. Appreciate you tuning in. Uh, my name is Brianda Felix. I am with Wiki Education. Uh, for those that might not be familiar, Wiki Education is a nonprofit. We collaborate with university instructors and students to add information to Wikipedia. So, uh, this panel today, um, we have a couple of in university instructors that have participated in our program, right, who brought their students in uh, to edit Wikipedia. And so we're just going to have some questions and listen about their experience running this program and kind of what that was like and, you know, and hopefully we'll have some time at the end for uh, Q&A, right? So if you have any questions, please uh, jot them down somewhere. Just Take a mental note and we'll have time at the end, okay? Awesome. All right. So I already introduced myself, Brianda Felix. Nice to meet you all. Um, let's go around, shall we? Okay. Great. Hi. Um, I'm Laurel Stavan. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Texas at Arlington. I have um, used the Wiki Education program for, I think, six rounds with six, six or seven different classes um, over the years, which we'll talk about a little bit today. Um, uh, students have worked on creating pages, building up editing pages, um, creating biographies, uh, and just bringing um, better representation to our topic of linguistics uh, as a way to, to bring their familiarity with the resources yeah, into a shared space. Great. Uh, I'm Latanya Reese Miles, also known as LT. I'm an adjunct faculty member at Santa Clara University in the Department of uh, Counseling Psychology and Educational Leadership. I teach on the educational leadership side and my focus is on social impact. I taught um, one time, so it's nice to have like the, the span of experience here. Um, one time, uh, so much thanks uh, to Wiki EDU, to my graduate students, and it was a course on uh, it, uh, innovation in higher education and i also created my first wiki page alongside my students mm, that was exciting and i'll be teaching it again yeah. mm -hmm. Yay. all right so this project right uh, we kind of pitch it to instructors as right typically you all will assign some kind of research project or a research essay right for students and we're like rather than writing this essay what if they contribute to Wikipedia, right? So that their work goes on this open access global site that many, many thousands of readers can then access, right? And so this project um, is very different, right? The instructors that uh, think about doing this kind of see it as a risk sometimes, right? It's new, right? Typically instructors already know what they're gonna do. They're like, this has been working for me for years, right? Um, so. <laughs> My question, my first question is, why did you decide to adopt the Wikipedia assignment, right? And what classes did you use it for? Okay, yeah, that's a great question. So let me just talk to comparing this to a research assignment. Uh, it's a lot of the same skills from the student's perspective. They still have to gather resources. They have to find appropriate resources. They have to uh, outline how they fit together. Um, it, so they really um, end up doing a lot of the same skills, except that when they're done, they don't just abandon the paper and I read it and no one else ever reads it. It's Now it's something that the, their peers can see, that people out in the world can see, that people can add to. Um, so they, they love that fact, actually, that it, it contributes to something that they can see forever, they can show their family. Um, and the classes I've used it with have been um, a whole, quite a range. So we did, an honor student did it as a contract one year, the first time trying it out, um, building pages on semantics. That was really lovely. Um, I've had a couple of big undergraduate classes We have used it um, in on topics where they were learning the content as they went. So this was their first class in pragmatics. This was their first class in corpus linguistics. I've used it for graduate seminars and discourse markers, and that also worked really well. And during COVID, we had a bunch of study abroad students who started to go abroad and got sent back due to quarantine and all had to end up doing an independent study 
and they worked with me on their Wikipedia pages about the country they were going to visit. Mm -hmm. So what was going, tell, tell me about Korea, tell me about the Korean language, tell me about the history of Korea and the Korean language, and they got to work on a lot of those things and again, share it with other people um, once they had put it together. Interesting. LT? Yeah, sure. Um, listen, graduate school, you have plenty of opportunities to write papers and <laughs> research papers. And what I uh, tell my students, not just in that particular class, but almost all of my classes, that if you're looking for a class where you're going to be lectured to and you're expected to write a 20 page paper, this class is not for you. Especially being a clinical faculty member, one of my goals is to expose students to different ways of learning, knowing, reporting back, and writing. And so this particular assignment fit into my, my normal, my typical teaching pedagogy. So it wasn't, it wasn't that unusual for me. I just hadn't used that particular tool before. And, um, like I said, like I mentioned, it's Department of Educational Leadership, and given that we're focused on innovation and social impact, I, I mean, it was it was it was perfect um, for for the audience that I had. Fantastic, thank you. Um, let's see. Let's talk about uh, Laurel. Maybe you can start us off with this one. Uh, how did you discuss Wikipedia's challenges around bias and representation with your students? Mm. And like, how did they respond, right, to participating in this knowledge creation process? Yeah, no, uh, that's a great question. So we, you know, first we have to talk about Wikipedia, what it isn't and what it is, yeah. based on what their other teachers have told them about it in the past. Mm -hmm. um, and then we recognize that all of them already use it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about when that works and when that doesn't work, what, what happens when you find something you can't find something. Well, if you can't find something, who's gonna fix that? We can fix that, right? Um, and then we can talk about look how you can see behind the pages, how many people have edited things, and why is it that the page on Cheetos has had like 12,000 edits over the years and goes on and on and on, but the page on an important language that you're studying has nothing or has one sentence, right? Mm -hmm. So how do we get more of these languages represented? How do we get more of the people in the field besides the two big names in linguistics? How do we get them to be covered? Um, and they're very excited to think about that they could contribute, that they can find things that didn't exist before, um, and that they can make their field be legitimately known, better known than it is um, all via contributing to this Wikipedia site. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so for me, my students are also educators. So they're either K through 12 classroom instructors, heads, principals, or folks who are working in higher ed or work for nonprofits. Um, and just like Laura was saying, it was really important to have that conversation about bias be a part of the class before you just can't jump in and start talking about Wikipedia and creating bios or editing without having that conversation about bias. And I had a, a reflection exercise and a classroom discussion about their experience with not, not only their personal experience with Wikipedia, but what have they said to their students about Wikipedia, right? So we had to get that out there. And of course, there's going to be a range, but many people have said like, oh, I told my students not to use Wikipedia. And we talk about why, and then we talk about, you know, like conversations that have been having, um, had already. Well, what is, what is and is not Wikipedia? And I know we're going to get to this, but spoiler alert, um, they all love the assignment, right? <laughs> and um, the assignment definitely shifted some views for sure. Just, I'll just dangle that out there. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, so one of the things that I kind of hear from, from other instructors that I work with is like, some of the students are like, why are we doing this, right? Like they don't, they don't really get it in the beginning and they, they don't, they're like, how is this gonna help me, right? Um, and so, I, and you all worked with a range, like you were just saying, you were working with the education professor, mm -hmm. professionals, you were working for everyone in the university, really, mm -hmm. all the students. Having taught with Wikipedia, right? Laurel for many years, LT for one round, but we're going to keep back. going. Back. Um, having taught with Wikipedia, what, what skills do you think the students developed from this project? Yeah, uh, I'll jump in. Um, so it's so funny we talked about 
not writing a research paper, right? I don't, the students said to me how surprised they were at how many revisions it took. And that is such a critical skill set, especially for graduate students, right? Um, many times with that 20 page paper, you write it, you're done, you're done and you move on. This, this assignment is all about researching, looking it over, having a peer look it over, like so many, um, it, it's, it's um, shorter writing, which I think is really, really helpful, not just the long, long paper. Um, also, we talk abstractly sometimes about citations and sources. Well, I mean, that's, that's the bread and butter, that's the backbone of Wikipedia. So I think from that perspective, it really um, shifted those graduate students thinking about this is why sources really matter. Not, it's just not something you do for paper that no one's gonna read but your mom, maybe, right? Um, or memorizing or not APA format. Like this is a really different way to think about the, the value of having sources and citations. And I can't, I can't stress enough, like the peer part that came about incidentally, actually, um, but just the looking at over and over and over again. I don't know if you saw something similar. And let me tell you, my graduate students were super nervous about, about this, right? You would think, oh, some of them are in doctoral programs. No, 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 they were, they were, they were pretty nervous. Yeah, I think a lot of students were um, a little daunted by the interface, like we all are maybe the first time. Um, but there is no sense that they're necessarily going to be better at this because they're digital natives, blah, 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 blah. I right. mean, everybody had the same um, mm -hmm. hesitation and mm -hmm. um, learning curve. And because of that, um, I um, always have my students work in groups on pages so that they combine their efforts. And they love that, which is weird because most students hate group work of any type, right? But they really, really liked these because they were nervous and they could rely on each other. Am I doing this right? Am I citing this right? They could peer review within the group. Then I had other groups read their things and give mm -hmm. them comments. And so they get lots of rounds of trying it out and seeing if it was really clear to the real world, mm -hmm. which is also mm -hmm. different than regular That's research right. papers. Yeah. So you had to be sort of translating um, what you're finding and making sure that it's cited. And, even just practicing the citing, which is part mm -hmm. of the training that they've built in, mm -hmm. um, looking at another thing, finding where you could put in some uh, solid source that verifies this or question that it's not verifiable, those were just wonderful skills. Mm -hmm. So I think that the collaborative work um, and the citation were mm -hmm. skills that they're going to take to all sorts of other classes, um, mm -hmm. even if they don't do Wikipedia, and they'll be better at Wikipedia if they continue on mm -hmm. with that. I have a follow up yeah. to that real, real quick, though, sure. because what I didn't do was formally assign the group work. It came about because the students decided they wanted to pair up. And that was the main feedback for me. They loved everything, but they said, next time, actually incorporate the peer review or groups into the assignment. Um, and so I will take that into consideration next time for sure. This, that was a moment where I was thinking, oh, you're graduate students, you're fine, and you, you know, individualism, blah, 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 blah. But really, um, I, I, should have, I should have incorporated the group work, so I will do that going forward. Excellent, excellent. I have a question, because, so uh, for this specific project that we were a part of, we were part of the, um, we got some funding from the Broadcom, foundation to create uh, biographies on underrepresented folks in STEM in the United States, right? And so I worked with Laurel and LT's class to create those bios. Um, and, and so their students were coming into my office hours, <laughs> right, every week asking me questions and stuff. And so, and one of, or a recurring conversation I had was discussing, like, what's a reliable source, right? We don't really think about that when we're, you know, scrolling through our phones and taking in all this information, like asking, like, where does this come from? Like, who is writing this? What's their agenda if they have one, right? And so did you have, did you have any conversations with students about this, about like, what kind of information can we, can we use for uh, I'll let biography? Laurel answer first, because I have a different comment to make about office hours, but if you have. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, we definitely talked about this. Um, in two regards. One is, just like with research papers, this kind of assignment is a chance for them to 
we do some training in the classroom with how to use the university library, get to the databases, find the newspapers, right? So we talk about, you guys have access to all these wonderful materials. This is one of the reasons we like to have university students do this. Um, but they maybe haven't actually used the library before. They've never walked into it. They haven't logged on to it. So there's a lot of training that goes on there. And then I think th there's specific subset of sources that are especially good, these secondary sources for these articles. So we talk about, oh, look, this can't be blogs, and this can't mm -hmm. be somebody's social media post. You have to find something where another person has written about this um, and, and cite it properly. So it, it's great training for making them yeah. reflect on mm -hmm. where they found this, and that there's going to be a whole bunch of other sources out there that may make the person seem important, but they're not the kind of sources that we want to use. So. You have to compare notes. Where did you find it? Could you get back to it? Was it published somewhere? Does it have a date? All of you know, all sorts of things, um, which I think is super good training. And it, they they do better than that than in other papers where they just grab something, drop it in, and hope that you never look. Right? Yeah. I, I just want to say something about office hours. Okay. So again, I am teaching adult learners who are teaching or at school all day and then coming to class at night. They went to office hours to see Brianda more than they ever came to see office hours for me, like in a level of excitement, right? And so they would go to Brianda's office hours right before class, and then they'd come and like zoom in, right? And, and I, you know, do a little check-in. They're like, oh my gosh, Brianda's so amazing, right? I was like, no one comes to my office hours. Um, but I think, I think there's like a lot to parts to this um, assignment that really kind of breaks down this idea of like, um, who is the educator, who is the student, like, uh, like these, these boundaries are not as present as you might feel in other spaces in school, right? Um, but they love that. That was one of the other um, joys they experienced in the class is having the support of WikiEDU. They loved it, loved it, loved it. And um, I know we'll talk about it more, but I was creating, I was writing a bio for the very first time along with my students. And so there were some questions I actually couldn't answer. I was like, I don't know, ask Brianda, right? But I think that's another example of disrupting you know this idea of like teacher student and hi hierarchies that's what i'm getting at like the hierarchies were very much disrupted in that particular class and one of the things we celebrated because i'm never going to have that experience of, again of being a first time writer alongside my students i'm always going forward you know i'm always going to have more experience but that was really unique as well to have that experience with them and and create along with them. It was so, it was it was such a special experience. That's fantastic, and that, that kind of mm -hmm. answers the next question I was going to ask. Oh, so, okay. if you have anything else to say, okay. Um, so, like, what was something you found surprising or did not anticipate about Wikipedia um, or teaching with Wikipedia? Right. So, you just spoke about breaking down that hierarchy with mm -hmm. uh, between you and your students. Yeah. Um, anything? Anything else? Well, I'll just the only thing I'll add is that. Um, I was ex anticipating more pushback from my students, and I would I would just regularly check in, and then it be then it became part of the class where they would report out, right? I didn't even they were just like, oh this is what happened or like this is where I am. That part was that part was just really nice to see that sort of organic enthusiasm not like the fake enthusiasm that you might anticipate like they and I and I really want I said I don't want you to say this because you feel like that's what I want to hear and they told me no seriously like this oh this is what they said oh my gosh this is the part that makes me want to cry you said this already Laurel like this page that I created someone said my like literally my mom is going to read this or in the case of another another student her her students were going to read her page. Does that make sense? She was a classroom teacher and she wanted her students to read the page. So I wasn't even thinking about that part of it, but that's what they love that, oh, this, this means something. Like someone's actually gonna read my work. That was, that was huge for them. Yeah, I'm sure you saw something similar. Yeah, yeah. And 
it, again, it's the mom factor. I think um, somebody in, I, I had one student who was um, translating a page that was on Spanish Wikipedia that's not on English Wikipedia of a biography of um, a Mexican, uh, a woman who's an engineer in Mexico. Right? And one day the student came in and said, my mom knows this person. She, she said she's really important. This is cool. You know, oh, like, like it's verified by something outside of the class that it's an important person that we're working on. So he was very excited about that. And yeah. I think other people too, it's like, I can share this with other folks. And they, I can prove that I was really working on this um, and they can see it too. So just that was a novel factor for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Oh, that's so great to hear. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, kind of, uh, let's see, let's, the next question, um, how has this experience, right, affected your pedagogy, your own research, your own perspective on open knowledge and, and you know, its role in your field? This might be a chance for you to talk about I know. your project. So, <laughs> Laurel, I don't know whoever wants to take it first. Um, the page I created while I was teaching this was for Brianna Taylor. And so that was very heavy and also um, I was braced for pushback from like communities or other editors, um, which I only got a tiny, like well, not that much, um, just a tiny bit. But first of all, that's such, what an honor, let me say that. What an honor to create not the page about her death, there's a page called The Killing of Breonna Taylor, but the page about her life, the one that's celebrating her life and talking about her legacy. So what an honor um, to, to do that. And I will say, that's probably, that's the most important thing I've ever written, right? Like, it, it should be, it should have even more views than it does, but the default goes to The Killing of Breonna Taylor. So that has just like, that, that shifted, I like, through other sources, I heard that her family read the page and loves the page. I, mean, I get chills just thinking about that, right? Um, and so that was that that has had like a really powerful impact on me. Um, and I, I mean, I, I reached out to Wiki Edu because I knew I wanted to do more work with under with diverse populations and, and representations like that's my whole that's my whole research right is particularly around the first generation college experience and the representations of it and i was hoping that wikipedia could be a pathway um, to increase that and it absolutely has been um, and just you know nuggets about brianna taylor that people just didn't know the fact that the fact that she was pre-med who knew that she was pre-med at the University of, of Kentucky and first generation college student. She had plans to, um, to be a nurse. So, so, you know, we can tell that story now, right? And provide, you know, um, just more complexity to it. And so I'm just one of like the biggest champions um, of, Wik of Wikipedia since then, WikiEDU. And it's, it's just been like truly phenomenal, I must say. Thank you. And Laurel, you've You've been teaching for a while now, so yeah. I feel like you can really talk about the changes that you've done, right? So maybe two things related to that. Yeah. One is just, okay, pedagogically, um, it's really made me stop and explain why I do what I do in the classroom, you know, why we need yeah. to learn this method, yeah. why, how we can learn these tools, why it's okay to spend some time learning to do it, but just explaining your steps along the way. That's really good in any class, right? But because I, we were working with a, um, a tool that was new to folks and that was new to me because it changes from year to year, right? Um, um, and being okay with just saying, gosh, I don't know, let's mm -hmm. find out, but right. here's why I think this is useful training. Mm -hmm. um, that's just, that's really good pedagogically. Um, but then as regarding voices and bringing people into the classroom and then into um, the encyclopedia, so my school is a um, Hispanic serving institution. Mm. It's a um, minority majority student population. It's got, um, got a quite a diverse, it's the fifth most diverse public university in the US, so hooray, right? So if I'm gonna work with students, especially undergraduate students, 
um, and have them start learning how to do this contribution, it is automatically going to help make a younger, more diverse set of editors out there. Now, they're not all going to end up being um, Wikipedians in their off hours, but several of them are every time we do the class, right? And again, I'm in a field that's more often female than male in linguistics, um, mm. so I've got diversity in gender, we've got diversity in the language backgrounds. They, they almost all of them have a different home language and are studying a foreign language for their minor, mm. so they get to work on pages that are not just English pages. Um, it, it's just like it's a real win for stirring the pot and bringing in a whole different range of editorial background. Yeah. yeah, I forgot about my little ones. I don't know if that's what you were talking about too. So check this out. I was telling her, uh, walking, going on a walk with a friend who is a, who was an elementary school teacher and I was telling her about Wikipedia and Breonna Taylor and all that. And it was um, Black History Month was, was approaching and she said, LT, you should come talk to my class about this. Fifth graders, right? And I'm like, what? I don't wanna talk to fifth graders. Um, and so what, what she wanted to accomplish was kind of breaking up the idea of like, during Black, Black History Month, students write their reports about Martin Luther King or Rosa Parks or Madam C.J. Walker, what have you. And she wanted me to talk about something more contemporary and then also talk about Wikipedia. She wanted to like break down stereotypes too. And I was like, oh my, I, I didn't know what to expect from like fifth graders. It, listen, y'all, it was an incredible conversation with two classes of fifth graders all um, in this one space and me talking about uh, Wikipedia and Breonna Taylor's life, life and death and just the questions that these young people asked, you know, were just like questions our politicians should be asking about this, right? And then there was one person, um, one young young lady at the very end, she's like, I want to write, I want to be an editor for Wikipedia, you know? And so that was just, inc that was just an incredible moment. And I was telling Gina, that instructor, that we need to tell that story more about, like, we need to stop, like, there's all this conversation about DEI, what does it mean? And like, the, the death of, I don't know, free thought or what have you. And I experienced something very, very different in that, in that particular classroom. So all the way down to little 10 year olds, it was, it was great to experience. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so in, you all mentioned this, but with our projects, right, we're improving the biographies of people from diverse backgrounds, right? Um, so do you, your students must have been talking to you about this project. You were saying they were checking in all the time. What do you think are the greatest barriers or challenges to improving representation on Wikipedia um, through this work, through this um, work that your students did that you are doing, right? And um, how, how does your students' work serve in overcoming those? Mm -hmm. You want to go first? And I don't know. I, I, I think we probably all already know about, you know, notability standard issues yeah. for women in every field. Um, and I mean, that's just something that the class had to grapple with. And we did, too. We have to find the sources, but people aren't writing about them because there are, weren't yeah. considered notable in the first place. So you've got this like, yeah. you know, terrible spiral. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, every page that we can add is making it more common, more expected, that there'll be a full representation of people in the field. But it, it is really one page at a time. We, we did six this last semester of computational linguists, and I was pretty excited about just adding six pages. Um, but now they know how to do that, and they know what kind of sources they need um, to go on in other areas of their interests, uh, other biographies. Other, um, I think you just chip away at the skills, yeah. Yeah, the notability issue is definitely a barrier, as well as, unfortunately, sometimes uh, other editors are are not kind to new editors in their comments, right? And um, and will just automatically, um, you know, take things down or just rude. And so that I I heard a little bit of that in my class, but I've heard that from other editors, um, particularly when they're writing or editing for people of color or other underrepresented populations, they feel policed um, in a way. And that did, like I said, that did happen to me a little bit. And for me, I, 
I don't know, I feel like I have a thicker skin, you know, um, and I or I check in with um, Brianda every now and then just to make sure, like, does this look right to you? But not everyone has that confidence to, to do that, right? And you may feel like, oh, well, then I'm in the wrong space. This isn't for me. So that is that is a big issue. Like, what happened to community? What happened to <laughs> to th th those types of things? That 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 was one one issue for sure. Yeah, I think that's a great teaching moment in general. I mean, mm -hmm. especially for grad students, is mm -hmm. to say, just develop the thick skin. It's mm -hmm. not about you. Mm -hmm. This is about you know blind reviewing. If you're going to go on yeah. and write academic papers, you're going to hear a lot worse stuff than you're hearing yeah, from these yeah. editors. You yeah. just have to be willing to say, well, they just don't know about it. I'm just yeah. going to continue yeah. improving it. Mm -hmm. But that's that's scary, and it's hard it to is. hear the first time when yes. you get some negative feedback because mm -hmm. you know you're used to just good work you know mm -hmm. and then you turn mm -hmm. in the paper and you're done good and point. to learn to negotiate that that's another good skill for your life yeah yeah absolutely. Yeah. fantastic fantastic um let's see let's see do we want to talk about ai should we open that door or... i'm not yeah but... <laughs> okay okay we'll, we'll move on we'll move on you all are going to hear about that a lot i think throughout this conference anyways. i'm not opposed to it but it just it hasn't come up for me yet i don't know if... With Wikipedia, it hasn't come up with. I, mean, I, okay. I just would say that it seems like it's the same kind of issue we're already dealing with. Is mm -hmm. if yeah. something gets generated from an AI, mm -hmm. you should check it. The same. If this comes from somewhere else, you should check it. You should just be checking stuff. Is really the goal here? I mean, I don't want them to generate this. I want them to be thinking and using their class mm -hmm. developed skills. Yeah. But if they're not, then whatever they produce, we still have to, you know, check it. Right? That's all yeah. I'm going to say, though. There's well, more people with more skills can talk about that. <laughs> I, I just just in terms of like being an instructor, like I'm teaching right now and I'm not talking about Wikipedia, but AI has come up and we talk about it openly. It's not like, oh, secret, don't don't talk about it. we're going to ignore that thing. It's going to go away. It's not going to go away. So you have to have critical thinking about it and um, be mindful of just like any tool of how you're going to use it when everyone's like, oh, my God, we can't do Wikipedia. Same, same type of thing. But it just hasn't come. I haven't had the intersection yet with Wikipedia and AI. All right. Well, just because I haven't taught it again yet. <laughs> All right. Um, so we were told to still kind of start to have things wrapped up by 40, right? So my, my final question, then we'll turn it over to yeah, Q&A. Yeah, All right. My final question is, what is the one big takeaway we would like, or you would like our audience to walk, walk out the door with? Um, I think we said it a little bit, just in terms of, I, I'll, I'll speak to the hierarchy part, and that um, it, I, I, as an instructor, it can feel unnerving because you don't know how things are gonna turn out, or you may not have used this tool bef in this way before, but it was such a like truly pleasurable journey to go on with my students and to have those moments where we're checking in with one another and um, and them walking away with something that for like most of the time is like living on and even if it got overturned it was you know like it was that was a teaching moment as well too so. Like have a support system if you want to do it for sure. Wiki Edu, amazing. But but yeah, I would just say just just try it. But just dip your little toe in there. Dip your toe in it. Yeah. Um, I would say that when I talk to the students, I want them to end up thinking something you said at the beginning is true. You still don't want to be citing Wikipedia for your work. Your teachers were right about that. That's not what it's for, but it is supposed to be the place you go to get more information and that you get a good overview and you can dig in from there. Um, and you want to provide that for yourself. You want to leave good notes. You want to provide that for your classmates who take this class in two years time. Um, they don't want to be frustrated by not having any idea what it's about because there's no coverage of this topic. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't want to you don't want this to be a shorthand, you want this to be a tool, but you have the knowledge now. You're a college student, you have access to a great library. Help us make this content better. They like that idea of being relied on, I think, and then that's what sucked me in as an editor. I can improve this topic. <laughs> when I think when it works well, that's where they end up. It's like, we can make this better. Yeah. 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 That's fabulous. Thank you so much. All right. Um, so we'll open it up for Q&A. We have some hands raised. 
we'll hang on. Thank you for a really cool discussion. I was curious in your experiences as educators, have any of your fellow coworkers kind of copied you or been like, wow, that's really cool incorporating Wikipedia into your lesson plans and yeah, there's, it's the full range, right? Some of them, if they're my age or older, are thinking, oh, Wikipedia, no, bad, scary, don't do that, right? But a lot of the other ones are saying, oh, that is an excellent tool, or oh, this subdiscipline also needs better coverage, or my students would love something that interactive, or I really like open educational resource, let's write this together. So it is spreading amongst more of the colleagues, not all of them, but some of them, yeah. yeah. Uh, two things happened for me. One, I found other faculty who were editors for Wikipedia, so we like find our own little community, like, oh, we support one another. And then our, the Santa Clara Department of, um, our Teaching and Learning Center invited me to, um, to host like two different info sessions along with WikiEDU to spread the word to other faculty. I don't, I don't know the outcome, I'm not sure if anyone did it, but I was invited to to, um, to speak to that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll. Thank you for sharing your experiences. Um, I would love to hear your perspective on what do you think would make your students persist and continue to edit Wikipedia after the class is over? And I ask this, um, you know, mostly because whether the students are learning linguistics or their student teachers, uh, if a professor is assigning a task to the student, then perhaps that can fall in the bucket of an extrinsic motivator. What would be an intrinsic motivator for a student to persist and continue to edit Wikipedia uh, after the course is over? Thank you. Oh, I'll speak to that, the, the, the jump right away. So number one, I organized a week uh, edit-a-thon that after my class ended months uh, way after my class ended and invited my students to participate they did that while so they had their own assignment like they created a bio but then they got so excited they started creating other bios and letting me know one of my students was featured um about um uh, was featured in a, two of my students were featured in an article so there are all kinds of other motivators for it and just that we can't underestimate the mom factor of like wow these things are living on and so i want to they might not necessarily be creating new bios but they'll just go in and edit once, once they realize how easy it is to do so i know for a fact my many of my students continue to continue to do it i, I don't know about you yeah, this is a big question I've been thinking about for years because you're right, we're assigning it and, and honestly I go in and I say here's a list of possible topics that you can choose from that are relevant to this class, so they're not entirely choosing them. But we also talk um, about it and in some of the practice exercises they get to choose what interests them and then they're really, okay, I'm going to do this anime page, I'm going to do this you know, Indonesian dessert, I'm going to do the things that they really care about is where they're going to continue. That's they're right. not going to write about computational linguists for the rest of their right. life, right. but once they have the skills they can apply it to all the yeah, things right. that they want to know more about or that they already have expertise in or that they actually are reading in. Mm -hmm. I think that's the way, it has to be a more open driven topic and not just make it like a class exercise yep. yeah 100 percent i'm curious what the uh what interaction if any your students had with more regular wikipedia editors during your class and, and if they had that interaction what that was like for them um like i alluded to there was uh, at least one student who was a new editor and there was um Someone had like honestly just rude comments about what 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 it was that she was doing. So I had to like make her feel better about that because she was a first timer. Um, so that was that was one in one case for me. I don't know if you had other. Um, not so not not a lot because but honestly we take the whole semester to develop the page and it's only at the very end that we're actually feeling um, like it's a vetted enough to be out there. So. 
Sometimes they don't get the rest of the world seeing it until late in the game, but sometimes it's been earlier, sometimes the page was already up there, and most of my interaction has been pretty good. You know, like bots come through, or somebody else adds something, or somebody links something, and that's enough um, for them to see that someone's seen it yeah. without it being super judgmental. But yeah. I think the more pages you do, the invariably you're going to get um, a page or a topic mm -hmm. that somebody's hasty about, right? Mm -hmm. um, but mostly that hasn't been as negative as I've seen other people experience, yeah. I thank you, wonderful panel. One thing I realized with the students, or maybe I, I overlooked in the training by WikiDU, is mentioning to them their username. So I, I don't find uh, much attention is given to them what the username will open up for them. So I usually bring up that here, you can go to your username, you can introduce yourself, and later you can put that in your CV, experience um. in um, science communication or you know, writing to a wider audience. Mm -hmm. Because usually they don't go to look at their username, they are not aware and uh, they do not think of um, including their CV. Oh, good, good. I didn't think about that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, you know, we talked about choosing a username, whether you want it to be gender identifying or not, whether you want it to reflect your name. Those are some issues that, that the training brought up. Um, uh, but then knowing about the user page, just like knowing about the talk pages, that's a great takeaway. Gosh, yeah. read the talk pages. That That's a thing. <laughs> but also look at the profile pages. of uh, If you get comments from someone else, find out who they're, where they're coming from yeah. too, right? I, gotta make a note. I, I feel like if this were a whole course in Wikipedia management, I would have more time for that. <laughs> but I'm also trying to teach linguistics <laughs> um, and then <coughs> intersperse it with this. So I feel like it needs a whole second course just on oh, for sure. moving forward on this domain. Yeah. yeah. All right. There we go. Hi. Right. Let me just make that note. Thank you so much. Um, so this is a question I've been trying to ask every educator that's been out there in the trenches, experiencing new generations of young people coming through their door year and year and year. Um, so I'm curious just to hear from you. Uh, there's a lot of rumor and hearsay about how young people today are, you know, this and that, but are there any things that really stand out to you or were surprising in the last, I don't know, three, five years? Um, any changes that you've seen in terms of your students' uh, relationship to knowledge, to, to encyclopedias, like how, how anything that stands out? I don't teach young people, so... I will pass. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think some of the things actually that they came that you brought up this morning, right, is that one, they want to do it through their phones. Um, even though we will meet in a computer lab and everyone has access to a desktop machine, um, they, they want to do it on their phone. Okay, so there's that. Um, and, they, and then they want to draft their notes in Google Docs, even though we're saying, why don't you draft them in your sandbox space and then we can all see it. Um, you know, so they, they already have a certain amount of um, system set up. So we, this has to work with the existing online systems that they have. And again, as I said before, that they're not necessarily any more savvy or across the board about technology. They each just know a different set of technological pieces. So if, if you can meet them where they are and have them bring those same tools in, that's great. If you can't, then it's just now we had to learn Canvas, now we have to learn the wiki database, and, that we, and it's just a lot of, a lot of learning curve. Yeah. Do we have time for one more quick question? Um, Wiki is academic development. That's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. What support do you have from deans or your administration? Sure, so my, my chair was so supportive of this. Um, and he even asked me like, LT, when are you gonna teach this again? Um, I, 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 ha I, have, I have plenty of support um, coming from my end. There wasn't like, oh, what are you doing? These are our, how dare you sully our doctoral students? Yeah. I, 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 think, I think because Santa Clara number one is focused on social justice, innovation, we're in Silicon Valley. I think tying it to that um, definitely, I think was a big part of it. 
I, I laughed because support is zero, I think. Mm. But there was enthusiasm. No, nobody minds whatever I want to do in my classroom, that's great. Um, but there was also not like financial or time commitment to doing this, so that, that was something I'd like to see a little bit more of. And I'm not in California, I'm in Texas, where like DEI is illegal to even mention, right? So we want to bring these topics up, but without mm -hmm. framing them in that way. We want to make it about diversity, but you can't say diversity. You want to make it about mm -hmm. uh, inclusion, but you can't use the, the I word for it. Um, so I, that's where I could use some more support is, at, you know, at the state yeah. and institutional level, but their hands are kind of tied right now for yeah. that. Yeah, context is important. Yeah. All right, well, that concludes our panel. Thank you so much for coming Thank through. Thank, Thank you, you, Laurel. Thank you, LT. Thank this you. was fantastic. Um, and yeah, well, have a great rest of your time at, the, at this conference, y'all. Yeah? Thank you.